All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the 2024 Student Government Executive Debate. My name is Fatima Azim. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of The Mercury, and I will be your moderator for tonight. I'll go ahead and explain how the night's going to work. We're going to have two rounds, starting with the Vice Presidential Round, followed by the Presidential Round. We're going to start with 90-second opening statements from each of the candidates before moving into a period of general moderated questions. We'll switch off between the candidates and I'll ask them some general questions and then we will have a cross-questioning period where the candidates will ask each other pre-prepared questions for about five minutes and then we'll move on to specific moderated questions where I will be asking candidates particular questions about their platforms. We'll then have closing statements for 90 seconds from each of the candidates and then we'll have an audience question portion. There's going to be a QR code up on the screen when the debate commences where you can scan the code and submit your questions and I will ask some of those audience questions during that segment. We'll then have an intermission for about five minutes. We'll return around 8 p.m. and then move on to round two, which is going to be the presidential debate. Round two will be almost identical to round one, except we'll have an extra cross-questioning period where the candidates will ask each other improvised questions based on statements made earlier in the debate. It's going to be a very informative night and UTD TV is going to be recording tonight's debate for anybody that wants to go back and freshen up on some of the information that's given in preparation for voting next week, which again is from April 1st to 3rd. Everybody will get an email where they can cast their ballot for executive candidates and for senatorial candidates. That video from UTD TV will be available on their YouTube page, which is at UTD TV. As well, the Mercury is currently live streaming the debate for anybody that has to leave early but wants to continue to tune in to the debate. All right, without further ado, we can go ahead and get started with the vice presidential portion of this debate. We're going to open up with the opening statements, starting with Debo Pritha of the Empower Ticket. Debo, you have 90 seconds for your opening statement. Hi, everyone. I'm Deborah Prita Padacharya, and I'm currently a third year sociology major with a minor in healthcare management here at UTD. I've been on student government for about two and a half academic years, serving as both a senator and as chair of the Student Affairs Committee. Throughout my time in student government, I've learned how to navigate communication with both administration and students, as well as the importance of cooperation. I also have a lot of experience with planning events, delegating tasks, and leading people to reach a common goal. My goal as vice president is to bolster student voices to the best of my ability and foster, foster connections to stand in solidarity, not just for students, but with them as well. UTD has such a diverse population, but the meaning behind that is obsolete unless we stand together and create a community where everyone feels heard and welcomed. I want to specifically focus on continuing efforts to increase transparency about the impacts of SB 17, which was recently passed by the Texas legislature. And I also want to increase student engagement with student government via in-person events and further push our presence, both through social media and face-to-face. -face. Overall, I hope to use our values of solidarity, engagement, and advocacy to create a more accessible and inclusive environment for everyone. Now's the hour, vote in power. Thank you, Diva. Now we're going to go on to Vishva of the Your Campus, Your Vision ticket. You'll Hello have 90 everyone. seconds. Arankara once said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. This quote encapsulates the essence of my vision for student government. Good evening, everyone. My name is Vishwa Patel, and I'm honored to stand before you today as a candidate of, of position of vice president for student government. Firstly, I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to the current student government senators for their dedication and service to our community. I believe that by working together, we can achieve remarkable progress and create a campus environment where everyone's voice matters, every idea is valued, and every student thrives. Pursuing my master's degree in cybersecurity, coupled with over four years of work experience as a co-founder and CTO in the tech field and vice president of programming for UTD GSA, I bring this role to a blend of leadership skills, technology expertise, and strategic innovations. My vision for the future is rooted in innovation and empowerment. I aim to increase visibility, reach of the student government, and ensuring it impacts the more students across campus. Additionally, I'm dedicated to making UTD a more social campus for everyone, organizing events, initiative, and promote interaction connections. Academic advancement is also a priority. Together, let's embark on this journey of progress, unity, and collective goals. Thank you.
Thank you, candidates. We'll now move on to the general moderated questioning portion. We're going to start off with Debo Pritha. My first question for you is, what is the most important qualification for the student government vice president, and how do you embody this qualification? You have 90 seconds. So I think one of the most important qualifications for this position is definitely experience. So like I said, I've been on student government for about two and a half academic years. And throughout that time, I've learned a lot about, like I said, communicating with the administration, how to do outreach towards students, and also how to navigate any potential limitations that we may face in this role. Because I think it's very important to understand what student government can and cannot do. And throughout my time on SG, I have learned what that is and how to navigate that if I'm elected into this, into this position. All right, thank you. Now, Vishwa, you have the same question, 90 seconds. I believe that SG plays an essential role in people's uh, student academic culture over here. So being a vice president, my role would be to empower and listen to people's opinion and how can I develop them thing. Given my experience and my professional career, I have the leadership capabilities that I can use to uh, solve the queries that people are facing on the campus over here. Every student voice matters, and I believe that my experience along with the, uh, this uh, leadership role will bring out my capabilities and will give me the platform that I can address to people more openly over here. Thank you, Vishva. Now we're going to start off with you, Vishva, for the second question, which is, what's one thing that you admire about the outgoing student government administration? You have 90 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> That's what's one thing that you admire about the outgoing student government administration? The outgoing. I believe that the previous, uh, the previous student government has been working a lot of things uh, across the campus, such as the spirit rocks things. And I believe that uh, giving one step ahead of what I can, uh, my expertise and my experience being a senator could uh, uh, help them to uh, take their experiences to one step ahead would be my more motive in this uh, as a role of vice president over here. All right, Deepa Preetha, you have the same question. 90 seconds. Yeah, so I have worked with the um, outgoing administration very, very closely as chair, and you know they have done a really great job of encouraging both us as both us as senators and as students to really reach out to others and to collaborate with others as well to create projects that can help us collaborative, collaboratively solve any issues that students may face on campus. The current administration has also done a good job of connecting us to other contacts with administration and helping us plan events that can help further reach students. So I think that they've done a really great job with that. All right. Thank you. Third question, and we'll start with you, Deepa Preetha. What's one thing you would want to change from the previous student government administration? You have 90 seconds. So one thing that I want to change is I want to further expand the reach that student government has towards students. Because I feel like a lot of the times when I would say I'm on SG, they're like, what does SG do? Right, that is something that we want to avoid. And I think that one thing we can definitely improve is pushing the presence of student government through, like I said, both social media and through in-person events, such as tabling and various other ev events as well. So I think definitely increasing our outreach and trying to expand and engage with more students. All right, thank you. Same question to Vishva. You'll have 90 seconds to answer. What's one thing you would want to change from the previous student government administration? I do believe that SG has worked very hard to uh, broadcast their motives and their agenda to people, but I believe that we are not getting that much of engagement or the reach that re SG requires. I believe that uh, this role would help me to uh, get my expertise, such as providing technical support in how uh, SG can uh, provide more, uh, uh, more uh, how they can put, put out their visions to people, such as uh, my agenda says that I want to have like a display TV that is dedicated to SG like a wall where uh, SG can broadcast their opinions and uh, they can uh, advertise their event that they're doing on campus. SG is working very hard to solve people's problem. But the thing is students are not aware about what SG's capabilities are. So if we have something dedicated platform that SG uh, can have such, th uh, as, uh, such as that, that will help students to get more uh, indirect contact with the SG's leadership over there. All right. Thank you. Now we're going to move into a cross-questioning period. So candidates, please have your pre-prepared questions out. We're going to start with 
Devo Pritha who can ask a pre-prepared question to Vishwa and he will have 45 seconds to respond. We can go ahead and get started whenever you're ready. All right. So I see your ticket has talked a lot about creating an amendments to funnel more funding towards housing on campus. Since housing funds themselves, how do you plan on following through with this? I know that SGU has been working a lot hard to increase the on-campus housing for students and uh, is, we have a committee for that uh, who is working on these things too. So I believe that uh, increase, we, talking with, uh, giving, uh, having, an exp uh, having an, uh, meetings with administrative and resolving and coming to a, a, a same point of uh, thing where we can uh, come to a same decision point why we are facing these uh, issues and what can be done instead of uh, having a drawback that uh, the university is denying that we cannot increase number of housing more than this thing, but everything has a solution and if there is a will, there is a way. So if we can all come to the same page, then it will help us to improve the uh, housing problem that we are facing right now. All right, Vishva, now you can ask a pre-prepared question to Deepa Pritha and you'll have 45 seconds to respond, Deepa Pritha. So my question for Deva is, given the complexity of modern day politics and governance, how do you plan to navigate the integrated relationship between student government, university administration, and external stakeholders to effectively advocate for student interest? Yeah, it's an amazing good question. So currently the, the Legislative Affairs Committee on Student Government is doing a great job of navigating the relationship between local government and students and having local officials come and speak at UTD so that students are aware of the people that they are electing and how their interests are represented. So that's definitely a great way to navigate that. And one of the things that I also want to advocate for is um, to get an early voting location on campus and that'll also help amplify student voices to make sure that you know we're electing people who represent our best interests. All right, Deva Pritha, now you will have 45, or Vishwa, you'll have 45 seconds to answer another pre-prepared question from Deva Pritha. So I understand that you're currently Vice President of Programming in the Graduate Student Assembly. What are you hoping to accomplish in this Vice Presidential role that you have not accomplished as a Senator in Student Government and as a VP in GSA? So my basically role as a vice president programming for GSA is to conduct events for students on campuses and how can we develop more engagement for graduate students. Whereas we know student government stands not just for the graduate student, it also integrates the undergrad students too. So me being a, a get, getting this role in this position would help me to get in touch more with the undergrad students too and we can make this university more diverse by making every, uh, everyone come on the same uh, platform and uh, oh, that is what. All right, now reversing the roles. Debo Pritha, you will have 45 seconds to answer a question from Vishva. What in specific do you think that the president, uh, vice presidential role will give you that power that you did not have as a senator that restricted you from uh, performing your art duties that you had right now? Yeah, absolutely. So I think being vice president, we kind of have that direct line of communication to administration, which can be very helpful if we want to, you know, increase transparency to the various resources we have on campus, as well as if we're working on more long term things such as getting back early voting on campus. So I think having that direct line to administration will definitely allow me to bridge a lot of gaps in communication and such. All right, thank you candidates. We'll now move into the specific moderated questioning portion of the round. The first question is going to go to Deva Pritha. One of the pillars of the Empower ticket is engagement. And under this pillar, you've expressed wanting to create a comfortable environment for students to communicate their concerns. How would you create this environment? You'll have 90 seconds to respond. Yeah, so there are multiple ways that you know we can create an environment where students can feel you know comfortable in approaching us. One is you know engaging with students directly, whether that be you know through in-person events, you know social media, you know being really really being open to any kind of criticism or feedback that students have for us. What do they want to see directly, and making sure that they can you know communicate with us face to face, and so so they can see that you know we're not just you know these representatives who are representing them, but we're actually here to listen to their concerns and make sure that we're you know, standing with them and communicating those concerns to the relevant administration or doing more outreach. And yeah, there are a lot of methods to go about this, but I think definitely increasing the engagement face-to-face -face is the first line of communication that we want to reach. Thank you, Deva Pritha. Next question is going to go to Vishva. 
Your platform emphasizes making life easier and more convenient for comments. Your platform's visions for SG, as stated in your candidate biography, include improving and increasing housing, improving dining hall food quality, and decreasing parking fees. What are the specific ways you plan to bring any of these visions to fruition? You have 90 seconds. So we have, uh, uh, as I was part of the Graduate and International Affairs Committee uh, uh, in my, this current Senate, we talk with the parking enforcement as well as the dining hall rest uh, food thing that we are getting complaints from students. Uh, so we already know that we are working on chartwells to not renew their contract. So we believe that students are paying much more money over there, uh, behind their parking fees because cars are everywhere. Uh, students' basic requirement is this transport that we are providing. And we know that a lot of students are commuting from long distances. And charging them high fees just to park their cars, I do not find that a valuable solution over here. So you can just charge a nominal fees to the students instead of charging high budget, uh, a high thing that we're charging right now. So we'll be working with the administrative and uh, get to the point there, how can we reduce this thing and uh, help students to uh, minimize their regular costings. And coming to the food point, we are working with the Chartwells. We talked with, uh, Chartwell appreciates feedbacks very good. So we gave them a lot of feedback from the graduate students as well as the undergrad through the uh, feedback form that we collected over there. So Chartwell is trying to work on that, but we believe that if you can get a better option other than Chartwell, that would be good for all the students on the campus. Thank you, Vishva. The next platform specific questions going to, we're going to start with Vishva this time, actually. Your platform also emphasizes decreasing restrictions on student speech. What are some examples of student speech being restricted on campus and what measures would SG implement if you are elected to decrease these restrictions? You have 90 seconds. As we know that the Spirit Rocks was a hot trending topic uh, during the previous months and we believe that student government ad hoc committee worked very hard to bring that thing back, but somehow the UTD administrator did not support that. We believe that the committee did everything to support the students and did uh, sp uh, speak in favor of students. So my opinion is that if we cannot get the spirit rocks back, let's try something else like putting a, po uh, putting a portal or putting like a wall something as that, that represents same like spirit rocks. If UTD cannot give a platform to the students, to the university that's a diverse platform for everyone, I believe that that's not uh, fair enough for everyone. So. I do not, uh, it's like if I get elected, if Debo gets elected, whoever gets elected, uh, my opinion is that we need to bring out something in favor of the students because it's their uh, career life that we are trying to build up over here. And if they get this uh, platform very openly, uh, that will help out to express their opinion, brand out everything that they are trying to do on the campus. Thank you. Next platform specific question is going to be for Debo Preetha. This is in regards to the advocacy pillar of your platform. How would you work with various organizations on campus to amplify student concerns and collaborate to come up with the best solution to these concerns? Yeah, so we currently have a lot of organizations that have chosen to endorse our campaign. Some of them include Commons for Better Transit, UTD Deeds Not Words, and I think having these connections already has given us a really good way to, you know, kind of establish a way to reach out to other student organizations and, you know, come up with ways to advocate for student issues. So let's say that students are having a problem with the transit on campus. So we would, you know, reach out to Commons for Better Transit and come up with a way where we can collaboratively think of how do we advocate for this? How do we bring this to administration? How can we advocate for this, you know, outside of UTD, whether it be towards local government or however, you know, we can tackle that issue. Thank you. All right, we will now have an audience question segment and I will ask some questions from the audience. All right. We have a question that is for both of the candidates. And to clarify, you'll have 30 seconds to answer these, each of you. First question is, beyond campaign promises, what obstacles do you expect to see while pursuing your goals and how will you handle them? We'll start with Deepa Pritha. You'll have 30 seconds. So I think that, you know, definitely administration and how willing they are to listen to our concerns because student government can only do so much. But if administration isn't behind us and what we're doing, then it's definitely not going to happen. So I think that communication with administration is of the utmost importance because that ultimately will be one of the biggest obstacles to getting things done. Right. Thank you. Same question to Vishva. 
I believe apart from what I've talked about, I, my personal agenda is to bring out a platform that is dedicated for the SG and that is open for all the students across the campus where they can anonymously put their opinions, they can talk about the things, they can, uh, that is not moderated by the UTD administrations. They can talk, uh, if they have any problem, they can express openly. I have seen that a lot of students do not come to Senate to address their problems because they might be having afraid, or they might be feeling afraid or they might not feel comfortable talking in front of such huge audience over there. So I believe that giving them such an open platform where it's not, there's no restrictions like we had a problem with the speed drops. All right, 30 seconds would, have passed, so we will move on to the next question. Right. This time, Vishva, we'll start with you. With anti-DEI laws and rising political tensions against marginalized populations in the 2024 elections, how will you act to defend students? You have 30 seconds. I believe that students build up the campuses. We work, this university is built with students. And if something is not standing in their favor, I believe that the university administration needs to really look after these things. As a student, it's we who, technically it's students who are running the campus, not the administration who are running the students at the end. So if I believe that if everyone stands together in this, not just me, along with the Senate and all the senators, we can get this thing very easily out. Thank you. Same question to Tebo Pritha. 30 seconds. Yeah, so like I said before, the Legislative Affairs Committee on SG has done a great job of connecting students to local politics and get, registering people to vote. And again, if I'm elected, I definitely will advocate for bringing an early voting location back so that students can have that voice and make sure that you know we're electing officials that have our best interests in mind. Because ultimately, our demographic and our voting group is very important and our voice matters. So we want to make sure that we want to reach out to those that can make that happen. Thank you. All right, there's one more general question for both of the candidates that an audience member submitted. We'll start with Deva Pritha. What have you done to improve campus during your time at UTD? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, so as chair of the Student Affairs Committee, my primary charge is you know, creating events to increase engagement and be uh, better campus life. So one of the things I've done is final scream. That was something that my predecessor came up with, but something I've really established as a tradition and you know, great student turnout, and everyone has a lot of fun. As well as the Blank Space Project, which is a pop-up art display and competition of student art. And since UTD is a primarily STEM-oriented campus, it's really nice to see students bring out their creative and artistic side. And I think that that has done a great job of really bringing that balance to campus life. Thank you. Same question to Vishva, 30 seconds. As a committee member of the Graduate and International Affairs Committee, we have worked closely with the students and resolving their, uh, their problems related to the food that we talked about before. Also, we are, uh, my involvement was to create events on the behalf of how uh, SG can support um, uh, other orgs on the campuses over there, like events such like Passport to the Wall. Also, I believe that we have worked out to be, we will be posting on the coming meetings over there that, about the problems that students are facing related to the health center that they are not getting appointments and they are uh, facing the limitations due to that. So we're trying to work out and improve all these things that students can uh, enroll and utilize the facility that student, uh, admi uh, UTD administration is providing to them. All right, the next question is a specific question for Debo Pritha. How do you plan to make SG more accessible to students? 30 seconds. Yeah, so I feel like I've already kind of mentioned this before, so sorry if I sound like a broken record. But, yeah. you know, again, just really reiterating ways to reach out to students face to face and really establish our presence on campus. And I think that, you know, if I'm elected as vice president, again, just having that connection with administration and have, being able to reach out to various student organizations and just having those established connections that I already have will be very important towards really increasing our outreach and also figuring out ways that students will be more receptive to us. Because you know, if we send emails, no one really checks their emails. Let's be honest. But you know, if we table, then people will yeah. show up and engage. Thank you. All right, last question for the audience question portion is for Vishva. In regards to increasing, decreasing funding for housing, you said where there's a will, there's a way. What is the way? 30 seconds. UTD, ad UTD administration has always been listening to us. We see that there has not been a solid outcome that we're trying to get it. So we're trying to talk to President Benson to get into this thing because we try to talk to different people across the campuses to get this thing solved. But it seems that somewhere there's that rigidity that we are not getting out of. So we believe that if all we get all the support of the students who are planning to stay on the campuses, uh, so that would help us there, that initial support will help us to get through this thing and would be a support as a strength that 
can all uh, uh, make our, our, our 30 seconds have passed. Thank you. We'll start off with Debo for the closing statement. You'll have 90 seconds. Okay, thank you all so much for being here tonight and listening to me yap. I know it couldn't have been easy. Um, I'd also like to thank my fellow candidate over here who made some amazing points about his platform and asked some really great questions. The future of this campus depends on you. It depends on all of us to vote for the right candidate and ensure that we can inspire change and make sure that our voices truly matter. It has been an honor to serve the student body for the past few years, and I hope to continue doing so as your student government vice president. My experience and the connections I have already established will allow me to serve you better, and I know that my knowledge and dedication will enable me to be an effective and compassionate leader. If elected, I will stand for advocating for all of your concerns, engaging with you all to work together to come up with solutions, and stand in solidarity, not just for, but with all comments. So thank you all so much for giving me the space and time to communicate what I'm passionate about and how I will take action. So once again, now's the hour, vote in power. Thank you. All right, Vishva, you have 90 seconds for your closing statement. To conclude, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to each one of you for your attention, your engagement, and your unwavering commitment to our UNCD community. Today, we have engaged in a dialogue centered to the values and aspirations that unite us, a shared vision and excellence, innovation, and service. Throughout this debate, I have had the privilege to share my vision for the future of our student government, a vision grounded in integrity and student-centered leadership. As we look ahead to the challenges and opportunity that awaits us, I am reminded of the words of Mahatma Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. Together, let us be the architect, architects of the positive change, the champions of progress, and the stewards of the brighter future for UT Dallas. I am humbled by the opportunity to serve you as the Vice President, and I'm deeply grateful for your support, your trust, and your belief in our shared vision. With your continued support, I am confident that we can overcome the obstacles surrounded and the challenges and achieve greatness together. Thank you, Debo, for being a great competitor to you. All right. Welcome back, everybody, to round two of the student government executive debate. We are now in the presidential round. I'm going to go over the debate format for this round really briefly again. We'll have opening statements, general questions, a cross-questioning period, specific moderated questions, a cross-examination, audience questions, and then closing statements. We'll go ahead and get started with opening statements. We're going to start with Devin of the Empower Ticket. Devin, you'll have 90 seconds for your opening statement. Hi there, my name is Devin Schwartz, and I'm a third year majoring in computer science and political science with a minor in philosophy. For the past two years, I have been dedicated to working in student government to create more avenues of communication and to form it into a body that's the most effective at addressing student concerns. I've experienced student government from the inside in various positions as a senator, as a committee chair, as a representative on university-wide committees, but I've also experienced it from the outside as a student. And I wanna take all of those experiences and bring them with me to be not only a fervent, but a prudent advocate for student concerns. I wanna focus on improving outreach to make student government known and accessible as well as approachable and also on continuing ongoing projects that improve the sense of community at UTD, and finally on building and displaying solidarity for pertinent issues, both at UTD and across Texas in the larger university system. Student government exists to be the voice of the students, and as president, I strive to ensure that it fulfills that purpose. That's why a vote for Empower is a vote for you. Thank you, Devin. Now, Shashank of the Spirit Ticket will have 90 seconds for his opening statement. Well, thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Shashank Elamanchi, and I'm running to be your student government president. I appreciate everyone here taking the time out of their day to come and be a part of this process and listen to all three of us speak. I'm here, however, for one very simple reason. I believe that our student government has failed us. Those who serve in student government at this very moment have become frighteningly insulated from the needs of the student body. If you go around campus and ask anyone what student government has accomplished for them, what meaningful change it has made in their lives, almost every single person will say nothing. 
Student government is invisible. Outside of the people in this room, I'm not sure many people even know about it. Mostly because it does not accomplish what the students want it to. UT Dallas is a markedly deserted campus, and student government's attempts to solve the problem have been half-hearted events that do not inspire any turnout by students. All it does is reinforce to students that UTD is a lame campus that provides nothing of value. Things do not have to be this way. They can be different. But if we continue to elect the same student government insiders, things will continue on as usual. But if you want change, if you want to see your student government work for you, then consider voting for the only outsiders in this race, Frida and I, and our spirit ticket. Thank you, Shashank. Now we're going to move on to Narav. You'll have 90 seconds for your opening statement. Okay, before I start my speech, uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Mercury and UTD TV to give us such a wonderful opportunity to present our words in front of such a wonderful audience. And I was really grateful to hear your speeches. They were really good. And dear fellow students, faculty, and staff at UTD, my name is Nira Rora, and I'm thrilled to stand before you today as a candidate for the presidency or for student government. As a freshman here at UTD, I bring fresh perspective, boundless energy, and a deep commitment to enhancing the university experience for all. Now, this is a speech that is generated by ChatGPT, and I'm not here to give you these boring speeches. So I don't need the paper to like, connect with my audience. So the, the question here is, why I'm running for a president. I feel that at UTD, whenever I ask people what is the thing that they want to get changed here, they answer me the social life. And I, I kind of agree with them. Because when you ask yourself this question, like what is the most important thing at college? It is not the age that you score. It is not the organizations that you were part with. It is the friends and the people you connect with, the experiences that you develop at UTD. And I believe when uh, you make new friends, new connections, what happens is that you build trust with them. And what happens when you build trust? You start to collaborate. And what happens when you collaborate? You work on companies that change the world. And I believe that if you, if you um, that is like one of the basic agenda that I want to work on UTD, and I will be explaining a lot of stuff for this later in my speech. Thank you. Thank you, candidates. We'll now go into a period of general moderated questioning. We're going to start with Devin. My first question for you is, what is your top priority if elected to student government as student government president next week? You have 90 seconds. Yeah, I think my most important priority is being an effective advocate for students. And a lot of that means making sure that we hear student concerns, making sure that students not only know what student government is, I know that's been a problem in the past despite our efforts, but also knowing how to engage with it and feeling comfortable to do so. You know, we have 20 hours of office hours for the president a week, but people don't tend to come because they just don't know that it exists. And I think that's the case with a lot of resources at UTD. So I think the first step to being able to advocate for student voices is learning what the student voices are saying and making sure that we're an effective conduit for that. Thank you, Devin. Same question to Shashank, 90 seconds. Yeah, so I think Devin made an, an actual very good point here is that uh, student government and UTD as a whole offers a lot of resources that students don't use. And uh, I don't think the solution to that is to offer more resources. I think the solution to that is to get out on campus and talk to people and ask them, you know, what do you want to see at UTD? What do you want to see out of student government? And when you ask them that, as we have already, you'll see that their voices echo strongly of a sentiment that we want our campus to have something going on. We want to feel like when we come to campus, it's worth coming. So making sure we have a lively social life is number one priority. Thank you, Shashank. Same question, Narav, 90 seconds. Okay, so can you please repeat the question so I can specify Yes, the what is your top priority if elected student government president next week? Okay, so as I mentioned in my previous speech, my top priority is to increase social life on campus. I believe I wanna make this place where a student can express them to their fullest extent. Even if they feel a bit afraid, I wanna give them a platform in, on which they can do it. And I feel I wanna make this campus a place uh, a home to students. I want UTD to be a fun place to be at. I, I want people to come here and like su be super excited to be here at all days. I don't want people to come here and say, oh, I have a class, I have to do attendance, I have to study and go back home. I, I rather want that, oh, I'm gonna do this, this, and that, and then I'm gonna bring my ideas to reality on UTD. That's my basic priority. 
Thank you, Nirav. Second question, and we're going to start with Shashank this time. Why do you think you'd be the most effective SG president? You have 90 seconds to answer. Yeah, um, well, I think it boils down to one thing. I think that there are you know, three good candidates in this race, of course, but when we look at an outsider who's truly gotten things done, I think that really only boils down to me. Um, there's, there's a lot of hubbub in student government about what happens and what goes on and all the minutia of student government bureaucracy. And I think you know, the bureaucracy has uh, funneled on as usual, and that's fine, but when you go to talking to students, uh, I've been out there almost every day just talking, not trying to campaign for anything, but just talking to really listen to what the students need. And I don't think there's any other candidate who's been out there every single day this week asking students what they need, asking students what they want done, and is willing to get those things done. Thank you, Shashank. Same question to Devin. You have 90 seconds. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Why do you think you'd be the most effective SG president? I believe that I'd be the most effective, not only because of experience. I think there are lots of people in student government who have experience right now who could be running for this position. But I've also been dedicated to uh, helping improve student life, not only within SG, but also in various other student organizations uh, within the School of Engineering and Computer Science with ECS Student Council, um, our LGBTQ population on campus with OSTEM and Chi Alpha Iota, um, as well as the Honors College with the Honors Council that I've been serving on for the past two years. And over that, uh, the course of that time, I've gotten experience as to the things that work and the things that don't in terms of events, in terms of communicating with students, in terms of getting the word out. And I think that I can bring all of those experiences to help me be a more effective leader um, and also to know and interact with the students and communicate their concerns to administration. Thank you, Devin. Same question to Nirav. I'm so sorry. Why do you think you'd be the most effective student government president? 90 seconds. Okay, so I believe that one of uh, the traits that is in me is like I talk a lot and I communicate a lot. As Shashank said that uh, he's not the only one who has been communicating with students all around the campus every day. Uh, I am in a lot of organizations uh, from my freshman year. I'm in approximately nine or 10 organizations right now. Some of them are AIAA, ACM, AIS, uh, the product management, the real estate club, the entrepreneurship club. So I meet people from all across campus, from all, all the majors, and I listen to their concerns. And uh, when I ask them, uh, like even in, in my gym, I ask them like, what do you want changed? Some of them give me some wonderful ideas like they want 24 seven library, they want 24 seven gym. And I believe these are good ideas and I wanna bring their voice to uh, the student government. And I feel that that, that, is, why, that is why I'm running for uh, the position. Thank you, Nirav. We're going to go on to our second general moderated question. We're going to start with, or our third, my bad, with you, Nirav. What makes your platform distinct and more actionable than the other platforms? You have 90 seconds. Okay, so uh, our platform focuses on a lot of agendas, uh, and I'm not really sure of uh, what Devin's platform is trying to achieve, because I read the UTD uh, Mercury article and I couldn't really figure out what, what, what are they trying to achieve rather than asking for votes. And uh, for Shashank, I heard like he wants to improvise spirit rocks. And I feel like um, we are trying to achieve something more innovative. We are trying to connect more students. And if you would have read our UTD Mercury article, we were trying to integrate an app into the UT Dallas app that allows you to connect students from all around campus. Rather it be an ECS major or a JSON major, there's really less probability that you guys are gonna meet. So that app helps you to like meet with each other. How? So let's say I'm playing a, a game in uh, request and I, I just posted on the app, like you guys wanna join in? And then you can directly join in and come and show up to the place and meet new people. And we're also focusing on uh, other issues that we feel are really important. It, it can be as silly as the di improving the dining hall west food quality. If you ask any freshman uh, uh, how, how is their experience for dining hall west, they would say they don't like it. So 
And of course, uh, the spirit, spirit rocks uh, was a big issue. And I was really sad when they, they got removed. But I feel we can do um, a lot of innovative things. Why, why just stick on it? We could get more progressive, like uh, why not a spirit wall or, or a, a gallery where a person can do graffiti or something to express themselves. So that, that's, that's what makes me, our platform different. Thank you. Devin, what makes your platform distinct and more actionable than the other platforms? You have 90 seconds. Yeah, I think um, I've heard really great things from the other candidates. Um, but in terms of Narav's platform, Your Campus, Your Vision, um, I think a lot of the actions um, are, in, are either not actionable by student government uh, to a large extent or have already uh, begun uh, actions within student government. So like the food in the dining hall has for years been an ongoing conversation with chartwells, with catering companies to see what we can do about that. Um, on campus uh, parking or housing. Um, I know just last year student government worked with Comets for Better Transit to uh, push for the housing and city government uh, uh, to be or some area north of campus to be reserved for on campus housing. And we were able to get that, which obviously we can't see right now, but is something actionable that we've already done. Uh, in terms of the Spirit platform, I think the Spirit Rocks are definitely important. I'm on the ad hoc committee to bring back the Spirit Rocks, and we've been in conversations with administration um, to see if we could bring those back, to see what it would look like, what they need it to look like, if we can bring those back, uh, as well as other forms of student expression. Um, there's been, I think for the better part of a year, a uh, committee dedicated to building a sticker wall. Uh, it started with the sticker poll where a lot the stickers got taken down. Um, people used it as a means for expression, um, but the on-campus authorities didn't like that um, it was, oh, thank you. Shashank, same question. What makes your platform distinct and more actionable than the other platforms? You have 90 seconds. Yeah, I think there's been a fundamental misunderstanding of our platform. We are named Spirit. It's about the rocks, there's no question. But it's not just about bringing back the rocks. It's more than that. It's more about the spirit of spirit, right? When you look at UTD and when you look at student government in general, and you look at these two other platforms, I know uh, Narav's platform here, uh, very nice, very good, but there's a lot of things that are you know, exaggerated that I would say student government, as Devin said, can't accomplish there. When you look at Devin's platform with um, Empower, obviously great ideas, great things that have been done, but as I said, business as usual. If you're fine with business as usual, I would encourage you to vote for them. If you're not, then I would say look at spirit here. Because spirit focuses on one thing that I would say is my, you know, one of my top priorities here, student government budget. We have tens of thousands of dollars that just keep rolling over and they actually don't. The money doesn't roll over from year to year. It's being wasted. Every single year we see tens of thousands of students' money, you know, building up over all these years that are just being pushed into something that, uh, you know, is useless. So when we look at um, how much money is being wasted on student government, um, it's kind of a travesty. And I think that Spirit's biggest issue will be making sure that student government isn't stingy anymore and that we're spending on the things that matter. Thank you, Shashank. We're now going to move into a cross-questioning period. Devin, you will ask the first pre-prepared question that you have for Shashank, and he will have 45 seconds to respond. Over the past three years and a lot during the speech that you've seen various incidents where you believed SG could have been more proactive. Uh, so what's prevented you personally from being involved with student government and trying to work to change that from the inside before? Yeah, actually, um, not a lot of people know this story. I was actually elected as a senator to student government and I never got seated. When I talked to Willie Chambers, um, this, I actually talked to him three times. Um, he said that I would get back to him, he would get back to me. Um, once you get elected, you fill out a form to become a senator. My outlook was locked by you know, the system during that time. I communicated that to him. He said he'd be available to help change that. The two times I went to him, he wasn't available, didn't show up, um, you know, wasn't in the correct state to answer my question. The third time I went, he said it was too late. So I kind of you know, felt like I gave up at that moment. You know, I wasn't really willing to keep, keep trying. But looking back on it, I see that now, you know, I, I think there really needs to be change from the outside. That incident was really what spurred me to run the absolute state of the bureaucracy in student government that I wasn't even able to be seated. Shashank, you have the next question that you'll ask to Devin, and Devin, you'll have 45 seconds to respond. Yeah, so what specific measures do you 
do you say that you've helped make while on student government, and what specific measures in the future as president will you take to promote student engagement and participation in campus activities and events? Uh, yeah, so personally, I worked for a while to implement a petition system on the website, um, which hasn't seen much use as of yet, but I think could be a great platform for students to um, propose their ideas to student government and show that a lot of students have support for that. Um, moving forward, I would also like to hold a lot more on-campus events, um, have more in-person engagement with students, and make sure that we're communicating with students in person. Thank you, Devin. Now you have the next question to ask to Narav Devon, and Narav, you'll have 45 seconds to respond. Um, how do you believe your past experiences in on-campus student groups, you mentioned you're in a lot of campus student organizations, has prepared you for the largely administrative and public-facing role of president? Okay, so uh, that is a wonderful question. Thanks for the question. And as I said that I was in a lot of uh, organizations, I'm also an officer in one of the organizations named AIAA. It is the largest ECS organization on campus, if you know that, you're, of course, you're the ECS council president. Uh, so basically my role there is to work on the website, but we also participate in a lot of administrative stuff on how the events are gonna happen and occur. And I learn a lot of stuff from the current president of AIAA, that is Kevin DeBoer. And I, I got a lot of insider information on how stuff works and how sponsorship works, how administration works, how the SOC works. So I believe that basically being a part of an organization and learning stuff from my seniors is the way that I, I learned this stuff, yeah. Thank you. Shashank, you can ask a pre-prepared question to Nirav, and Nirav, you'll have 45 seconds to respond. Yeah, so I, I know you said that you're kind of new to campus, but uh, I, I just want to offer you this opportunity. What specific ideas do you have for fostering a sense of community and belonging among students that haven't already been you know, set up here? Okay, as I said that, a lot of students, what do they do usually is that a lot of people commute here, and basically they come at campus, they have a lot of work to finish, they don't have much of a time to enjoy the campus life. Even if there are events going on campus, they really don't go into those events. And I feel that that, that could be changed. We could help the students uh, like bring their voice out, help them connect to other students, give them a little push, like, um, like if, if, if I'm a person who is not, uh, who's like really busy, I won't uh, bother to go in to an event and see what's happening, but maybe if we have a platform uh, and on which we can allow students to connect with each other, or, or like interdisciplinary students, like an ECS student meeting with a JSON student. Thank you. Now, Nirav, you can ask a question to Devin, who will have 45 seconds to respond. Okay, Devin, uh, so I am reading your UTD Mercury article right now, and I cannot find what exactly new you were trying to do, because uh, the normal things for a president to do is, of course, communicate with the students and get that communication to the administration. What, what is new that we guys are not doing and you, you feel that you can accomplish? Yeah, as I spoke about earlier, I think um, making student government more approachable to people, holding more in-person events, making sure that we're able to communicate with the student population effectively um, through both online, app, um, but yeah, in-person means, um, as well as um, pushing for more communication of the resources that already exist, because I feel that those are often overlooked and can solve some of the problems that students have. Thank you. Nirav, you can ask a question to Shashank, and Shashank, you'll have 45 seconds to respond. Okay, so I'm paraphrasing UTD Mercury right now. It says Romero and Yalamanchi said they were motivated to, uh, okay, after the rocks were removed, R Romero and Yalamanchi said they were motivated to run for SG. So, uh, and of course, afterwards, it says that uh, we want to know what the student body wants so that we can make that happen. So. Uh, after I read these two lines, I understand that you want to get the student body's voice heard, but that's one of your agendas. But the main agenda that, of course, the name of your ticket says Spirit Rocks. So is that the only motivation or is that the only thing that you want to achieve? Like, is that the end of your passion? Like, let's say you achieve Spirit Rocks back. So is that all that you want to achieve? 
Yeah, I think that's an amazing question. It gives me an opportunity to clarify what our ticket means. As I said before, spirit is more resembling of the spirit that we're trying to build here at UTD. A vibrant campus culture, a spirit rocks are a part of that, but they're not the end goal. When you look at UTD in general, you want to build a culture here so that we can not only be like other universities, because frankly, we won't be like other universities even if we try. We want to be special, we want to be unique. As you said, there are many ideas outside of just the spirit rocks that we can accomplish, but more so, the biggest part of our ticket is really listening to the students, because we can stand up here and parrot all we want about things, but I think it's more important to go, you know, ask the students, everybody on campus, and be like, what do you want to see out of your student government? Thank you. We'll now go into our specific moderated questioning segment. The first question is going to be for Devin, and you'll have 90 seconds to respond to this. What makes the pillars of your platform, engagement, solidarity, and advocacy, more important than the other student government values like transparency or accessibility? Yeah, I think both transparency and accessibility are incredible values, but in order to have a student government that's effectively communicating the concerns, that's working on those, we need to make sure that people are engaged. We need to make sure that we're advocating for those concerns. Uh, you know, accessibility we can work towards and we are working towards. Um, and I think that's part of engagement and transparency as well. Um, but, you know, transparency can only go so far if no one's looking. Um, so I think more than anything, we want to make sure that we're standing with students, um, making sure that before we get concerned about transparency or uh, accessibility specifically, that we're with the student body and we're engaging them so that we can advocate for their needs effectively. Thank you, Devin. The next question will be for Shashank. Your candidate biography says that you became motivated to run for a role in SG after the Spirit Rocks were removed last semester, and you've emphasized pursuing reinstatement of the Spirit Rocks if elected as SG president. SG has already taken steps to advocate for the return of the Spirit Rocks and even proposed alternative public platforms for student expression. What would you do differently to get the Spirit Rocks reinstated? You have 90 seconds. Yeah, I think this is really important, um, not just as the Spirit Rocks in general, but just a conversation about what happened after. So when I looked at when the Spirit Rocks were removed, of course we were all upset. I mean, I think that's a pretty common, you know, universal feeling there. But when you look at what student government did after, you know, I, I think they did an okay job with the resources they had, but it wasn't enough fire to the feet of the un university officials. Not so much that, you know, we didn't put pressure on them as a student body, but we didn't put pressure on the people above them. You know, the Board of Regents is actually, for the UT system, is actually pretty approachable. And if you talk to them, they have a lot of control over all the UT system. You know. UTSA did this when they talked to the UT Board of Regents, when above uni university officials, they actually got a lot of change done at the university level. I think we just haven't expanded our, you know, mind, you know, thought outside the box in that sort of uh, setting. I don't think it just ends at the Spirit Rocks, of course, but I think that uh, at least looking at it from that perspective would uh, help get them back. Thank you, Shashank. Next question is for Narav. You said in your candidate bio that as a freshman, you could bring a fresh perspective to student government as president. But without any prior experience in student government, why not run for a senatorial position? You have 90 seconds. Oh, this is a beautiful question. A person had came up to me in my speed campaigning and had asked me the same question. So I believe that uh, as I have previous ex experience in student government, not at UTD, but at my high school. And I believe that um, I, ran, ran, I ran for a presidential role because I think that I can get a lot of things done a lot faster and I get a lot of more uh, approachability to the administration to get that things done rather than being on a senatorial position and being put on a committee. So that's why, uh, that, that, that is like the main reason that I'm running for the president. Thank you. Thank you. Now the next specific question is going to be for Devin. You mentioned your wide network of connections with student governments at other universities. Explain these connections and how you would utilize them to help create a more united community on our own campus. You have 90 seconds. Yeah, um, so we've been talking, uh, me and Debo, with some other candidates that are running for executive positions in other student governments. Um, I believe there was UT Tyler, UT Arkansas, or not UT Arkansas, but a uh, university in Arkansas, um, as well as UNT and a few other universities nearby. 
Um, and I think uh, both having those connections and being able to look at, okay, what are they doing? What works for them? Do we think that's going to work here? Um, and being able to uh, share and communicate and see what works better, what has worked in the past, and any new ideas that we haven't tried yet. Um, additionally, I think that for wider efforts that aren't really the decision of the university administration, but go higher to the University Board of Regents or go to um, the board of uh, the system, university system, then we need to be able to show a united front there. And we can do that by communicating and making sure similar things and resolutions are being passed in neighboring student governments. Thank you, Devin. Now, Shashank, you've stated that there were many incidents with the administration that student government should have been proactive on. What are some of these incidents that you feel SG should have been more proactive on? 90 seconds. Yeah, um, not only with the administration, but I'll address that first. I mean, the whole reaction to the Spirit Rocks, I understand student government uh, did their best in that situation, but there's been other issues. Um, where I think student government has, you know, done work but hasn't made it as aware to the administration how much of a problem this is. You know, parking has been a big thing that a lot of students talk about. And, you know, there's been work in committees on parking and, you know, what can we do as a student government? But I think there really needs to be a campaign for the administration to show them that we are not going to just tolerate them changing up parking like this, making life harder for all our students. It's just not something that, you know, we should tolerate. And uh, as for other things, I think that student government has just been... Um, not as transparent as it should be in their dealings with the administration and in their dealings with uh, other external factors like their recent closed door meeting. Thank you, Shashank. Now, the next question is for Nirav. In your candidate bio, you say that you could bring innovative and mind-blowing ideas to the table as president. What innovative ideas do you have for student government? You have 90 seconds. Okay, so I have mentioned it before, but um, one of the ideas, one of the innovative ideas that I say, or I claim, was this app named Rendezvous. It is made by a UTD grad student. And what does the app do? It gives you an opportunity to meet new people. It increases social life on campus. And of course, uh, it can also be used like apps with like Gather Connect that allows you to post your events. But I feel like what if we integrate that app to our UTD app, and already we have such a good user database that would increase a lot, lot, in, I guess, social life, I guess, in new connections. And the other innovative ideas that I have is like a lot of things in my agenda. People say that it is exaggerated or it is not achievable. I think they have not achieved it yet because we have to think out of the box. As Sir Chang said, like parking fees is such a good thing to talk about, but um, people say that student government can't do much about it. I think they have not tried much for that. Even if they try, we can try better. That's, th that's my perspective. Rav? Now we will go into a cross-examination period. So for this section, you guys will get to ask each other improvised questions based on statements made earlier in the debate. We'll start with Devin, who can ask an improvised question to Shashank. And Shashank will have 30 seconds to answer. Um, yeah, I know you talked about, about um, things you would want to do in terms of leading an effort on parking. What would leading that effort from student government in the student body look like to you? Yeah, so number one, I think that, you know, setting up a meeting with administration, like direct one-on-one -on -one would be a big thing. I think number two, we got to have consistent and repeated uh, administration town halls. Get the administration officials out here to actually talk to students, to sit down. I know they do it in politics. They can do it here too. Um, and make sure that they're really listening to each student who comes up there and wants to ask them a question, not just us. You know, I know student government's supposed to be the liaison between the students and the administration, but I think it also works good if the administration is hearing directly from the students about their needs, like you mentioned parking. Thank you. Now, Shashank, you can ask an improvised question to Devin, who will have 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, so I know you talked about your experience on student government, all the things you've done. Um, I know the online petition form, you mentioned that before and today. But I wanted to ask you, what specifically are you going to change from the current student government that is outgoing right now? And what is your number one priority that you say hasn't been achieved there that you will achieve? Yeah, I think there have been a lot of projects achieved by the current student government, but I think year after year we've seen people talking about communication. We need to improve communication in this way or that way. And I think uh, being able to see 
everything that hasn't worked and has worked but only to a limited extent, um, I'll be able to present new methods of communication, of outreach to university students to make sure that we're really being one with the student body and that the student body knows about the student government. Thank you, Devin. Now, Devin, you can ask an improvised question to Narav, and you'll have 30 seconds to respond. Um, yeah, you talked about your app, uh, Rendezvous, and connecting that or incorporating that within the UTD app. Um, do you know if there's been any communication so far on getting that incorporated or what that process would look like? I don't believe that we have communicated that with the officials of the um, UTD, because I think we discussed that after the last Senate meeting that we're going to do that. Uh, either way, he was elected as a president. But I feel that is one of the good things that we should work on. Even if we are not incorporating the app, we can just make a new section in the UTD app after, like, there are new sections that come up in UTD app. Like, the latest one was the buy, trade, and sell thing that, that was uh, added to UTD app. So more features in the app will, of course, make the app a better place to be at. Uh, it can be, of course, I, I feel like we should m develop our app in such a way that people are excited to use it as, as Instagram. Shashank, you can ask an improvised question to Nirav, and he will have 30 seconds to respond. Yeah, so I know you mentioned that um, Rendezvous and Gather Connect. I'm actually good friends with the, with the founders of both of them, and we've looked into, you know, looking how that could not only incorporate into a UTD app, but also in just in a general setting, how that could incorporate on campus. Uh, I've talked with um, both of them on that and their teams. What would you say you bring to the table to that conversation that, um, you know, the other candidates couldn't? Can you just repeat your question? Yeah, so um, after talking to the teams of Gather Connect and Rendezvous um, and formulating a plan, I was going to ask, what, what can you bring to the table to that conversation that the other candidates cannot? I feel like um, I can bring a much faster process in like expediting the process of getting it into the UTD app because I feel uh, there is a lot of discussions that happen and they, they, they are just discussions and there is no implementation on it. And I feel like I'll, I can bring a lot of ideas uh, into those apps like in, in Rendezvous, like it's made by James and I had a discussion with James of w what more new features could be added to the app. And I, I am not in touch with uh, the, the founder of Gather Connect, but I, I really like the idea of the app. That's why I, was, um, I mentioned it in my Mercury article and this speech. Thank you. Nirav, you can ask an improvised question to Devin, and Devin, you'll have 30 seconds to respond. Okay, so Devin, as you pre previously mentioned in your speech, is that we want to increase communication, we want to increase the amount of events, we want to increase outreach. These are all generic ans answers. Uh, even I can say that, even ChatGPT can say that. What, uh, what is, what, can you give me specific examples for each of them? And, what ha and it should be unique, it should not be things that have done before. Um, yeah, I think just having uh, scenarios where we sit down maybe in a cafe and talk with students, have the opportunity for them to come and approach us and just meet us where we are. Uh, or working within communications, there were discussions of having some kind of podcast, uh, collaborating with radio UTD or UTD TV, uh, just exploring avenues that haven't been tried before. Um, and like that is to say, I do think a lot of the um, prior uh, things that we've tried out have been successful to a limited extent, and I wouldn't want to get rid of those completely. Um, I think they do need more publicization, um, but they can be beneficial. All right, Nirav, you can ask a question to Shashank, who will have 30 seconds to respond. Okay, Shashank, I heard that uh, you tried to be a senator before, and you tried to bring a lot of changes. Let's say you were not uh, you are not as a senator, but what else did you do on campus uh, to get those changes done at your be best extent? Like, did you just give up on the dream? And right now also, like, or would you just give up on your dream if you achieve the Spirit Rocks thing? Yeah, so I already, you know, answered the Spirit Rocks thing before, but I think that's a very genuine question now. I didn't just give up on the dream. I, I would never give up on that dream. I really see UTD as my home away from home right now, and I'm trying to make it that way for everyone. I'm from Philadelphia, so I'm not from Dallas. This this is nowhere close to my home. So it's been really hard acclimating to UTD culture here. But I've tried to get everyone else that I could see, you know, who's from outside Dallas, you know, from Houston, from Austin, try to get them into a, you know, real safe space um, to talk, to, you know, be friends, try to, you know, be friends with everybody on campus, you know, just go up and talk to them, you know, when you're in the res halls, and there's a lot of freshmen this year. 
just go up and talk to them. I've made it a very big priority of mine to just go and talk to people on campus, as I've mentioned before, but mostly talking to these freshmen, making sure that you know, they know they have a home here. All right, we will now have our audience question portion of the round. All right, you guys will have 30 seconds to answer the general questions to start off with. And we will begin with Devin, what makes you different from the SG presidents of the past? We have 30 seconds. Yeah, I think that just being here and coming here now has made me different from the presidents of the past. I've been able to learn from their mistakes. I've seen the things that have gone right and seen the things that have gone wrong. Uh, and with that, I bring the ability to change and continue to improve. Uh, you know, I don't think we should entirely discard the past just because, you know, we're not where we want to be. I think we can further build upon that. Yeah, so I actually take a different stance here than Devin. Um, I think there's, you know, some, some bits of the past that we should really keep, but I think that this continued dysfunction and on UTD and within student government has shown that we cannot continue with the ways of the past. We have to bring bold new ideas and a bold new vision and really show UT Dallas that we're willing to change with their, with their needs, that we're willing to listen, and that, you know, it's not going to be business as usual. All right, same question, 30 seconds to Narav. Okay, I completely agree with Sushank's statement that we want to bring some new ideas. And the thing that makes me different is like, I'm, I'm not a senior or a junior who's going to graduate. I'm, I'm going to be here for long. And I feel like I can bring a lot of changes on this campus. And that, that is basically the agenda of our, your campus, your vision. It says that we want to bring your ideas to reality on our campus. So yeah, that's what makes it different. For the second general audience question, UTD historically has low SG voter turnout, and many students are apathetic or unaware of SG initiatives. Why do you think this is the case, and how will you change this? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, so uh, this is actually a funny story. When I was going through the election results of our last election, you know, turnout as compared to the greater student body was at maybe 2.5 to 3%. It's a pretty sad statistic. And when I went out to just these, I was sitting in a rest hall, rest hall north this one day, and I just went up to this freshman because he was talking about, you know, what he thought student government did, and he actually knew nothing about it. And I think just having those conversations with people, I don't think online is the best way to do it. I think in person is the best way to do it because in that maybe three minute conversation I had with him, he was really inspired and he's actually running for student government right now. Um, so I, I think that was a very good idea. All right, we're gonna go with Devin. Same question, let me know if you want me to repeat it. You'll have 30 seconds. Uh, yes, please repeat it. He historically has low SG voter turnout, and many students are apathetic or unaware of SG initiatives. Why do you think this is the case, and how will you change this? Yeah, I think this is the case because our methods of communication thus far have been kind of limited. Um, you know, we've had speed campaigning events in person, but that really relies on foot traffic passing through and happening to catch people. Um, but that's simply not the case because a lot of people are in class or are commuters, so as soon as they get out of class, they're going home. Um, so I think figuring out new ways to reach them, um, making those multiple modalities, and making sure that people know about those multiple modalities, both online, in person, uh, whatever we can, uh, is really important for making sure people are more aware of student government. Thank you, Devin. Same question to Narav, 30 seconds. Yeah, can you please repeat it? Yes, UTD historically has low SG voter turnout and many students are apathetic or unaware of SG initiatives. Why do you think this is the case, and how will you change this? I think a lot of students are not uh, really engrossed into SG, because there is really, I guess, I, even I have like seen the SG website on a fluke when I was looking for something else. And I believe that um, we should work on that issue. We should be more innovative, like during our speed campaign, People were, the other candidates were just sitting and just saying stuff like, I want to do this, I want to do that. But I wanted, I took an innovative approach and I said like, please do 25 push-ups if, if you want to win something or 
please uh, play beer pong with me with chocolate milk. So I, I try to engage with students in live time and make them in more interactive. Like SG usually posts stuff that is really not necessary for a common student to know and they're, they're not interested in that. All right, next general question, we will start with Nirav. You'll have 30 seconds to answer. In what ways will you aid the school in creating a better environment for students? Okay, so I feel that um, a better environment is of course created by the students. It is not something magical that we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna, of course, encourage them more, a lot more to create some new events. It could be anything. It could be anything that uh, comes to their mind. It could be playing volleyball. It could be playing, it could be dancing, it could be anything that um, makes a student more excited on campus by listening to their voice, yeah. Thank you, same question to Devin, and you'll have 30 seconds. Yeah, could you repeat it again, I'm sorry. Yes, in what ways will you aid the school in creating a better environment for students? Yeah, I think a big thing of our campaign is um, post Senate Bill 17, which greatly restricted the um, diversity, equity, and inclusion on campus is making sure that we still make uh, UTD a safe and inclusive space for people. Um, so student government, we're taking on the multicultural and lavender graduations. We're looking to collaborate with student orgs to make sure that um, those things are staying. And I honestly think that that collaboration with student orgs um, is one of the best ways forwards because students really are the lifeblood of this university. And we as student government can only do so much personally. Thank you, Devin. Shashank, in what ways will you aid the school in creating a better environment for students? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest issues at the University of Texas at Dallas is the you know, feeling of sadness that just lingers around the university. It feels like everyone is, you know, always depressed. And I think the biggest issue that we have here as an environmental problem is that the university doesn't feel welcoming. Now, see, I have worked with the UTD FSL office in the past to help, you know, increase homecoming, uh, home fest turnout, and that worked really well. I think that was a great thing. We had lots of food, lots of vendors, lots of students, and I think we can continue events like that so that, you know, students don't feel like they have to stay in, so that they can come out and, you know, have a good time. Thank you. Now we have a positive question from an audience member. We'll start with Devin for this. What do you admire about the other candidates? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, I think, um, Harav, for one, you have a lot of innovative ideas. I think you clearly have a lot of passion for um, what you want to do and pursuing those ideas. And I would love to see where that goes in the next four years. Um, and Shashank, I think you really value, again, that innovative thinking, that ability and desire to try new things. Um, I mean, personally, I think that it's misguided at some points, but uh, still, I admire the innovation and admire the uh, willingness to try to think out of the box and go through paths we haven't gone through before. Thank you, Devin. Same question to Nirav. What do you admire about the other candidates? You have 30 First seconds. First of all, whoever wrote this question, I'm really grateful to them because I get to admire well, my candidates on stage. These are not just the candidates who are standing against me. These are my seniors whom I look up to. And for De uh, Devin, I have been to a lot of, uh, like some of the ECS council meetings at least, and I have seen him being a lot professional there. And I really look up to him in that way. His connections are really good. And I feel that his policies that he want to bring to UTD are also really good. And for Shashank, uh, come on, he's such a social level guy. You just see an audience here, just here to cheer for Shashank. And yeah, so I feel that his ideas uh, are gonna take a great impact on UTD if he's ready. Ah, didn't mean to skip over you. <laughs> All right, hopefully you have something to say about your fellow candidates. Yeah, yeah, um, I, what I, was, do you... I, was, I was hoping I wouldn't get to miss out on, you know, complimenting these handsome yeah. young gentlemen here. Um, <laughs> What I will say about Narav is that he is so energetic and vibrant and full of promise that I know in these years to come, whether he gets elected here or not, he will make such a good impact on UTD. I know that um, he's done so well so far, and I look forward to seeing what he's going to do in the future. And as for Devin, I know that we run in opposition quite a bit, um, but I will say I admire your dedication to student government, and I have never doubted your integrity. <laughs> 
Okay, Shashank, now we have a specific question from the audience for you. You mentioned campaigns and pressure for change. Why did you not do this earlier or make a campaign to pressure SG inside? How would you coordinate pressure? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, I think this is a very good question. I think it's a very, uh, you know, question with a lot of pressure on it, but I welcome those sorts of questions. I think one of the biggest things that um, a lot of people misunderstand about me is that, you know, I haven't put pressure anywhere. It's just not been pressure inside of student government. It's been pressure outside. When we go to administrators, the best way to talk to them is, you know, to open up a dialogue. You know, pressure on them, but you don't have to go and, you know, hold a sign up outside of their office. Meeting with university officials, I have done, and I will continue to do. And I think people who, you know, say that, you know, this isn't happening, obviously haven't seen that part of my campaign. Thank you. Next specific question is for Narav. Parking is an auxiliary service. What services would you have the university remove in order to reduce parking fees since parking is self-funded? You have 30 seconds. I won't say that I'll have some services removed from the students. That would be not good, of course. And I, I know it's an auxiliary service, but I think there could be things that could be changed or that could be done, at least for the students, the fees could be reduced. And of course, it's increasing day by day. And if I see the budget breakdown that I was provided by Leah, there are some things that are ambiguous in a lot of auxiliary services. Like, uh, for example, in dining, it says that it is, uh, a lot of part is not available to us because it's not in the public part of the contract. Now, how does a student interpret that? So I want to improve that part too. Devin, your specific question is, how specifically will you ensure that student voices are listened to, particularly when students feel ignored by administration? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, I think a lot of times when students feel ignored by administration, uh, it's because the student or the administration either A, isn't being communicated that concern, uh, or B, they don't understand the gravity of it. You know, if one student is facing something, then it's likely that it's being faced by a lot of students. And being able to collect that information, show that support, show that this is something that a lot of students are dealing with, I think could be very important to making sure that those voices get heard. Thank you, Devin. Next specific question is going to be for Shashank. How can you guarantee your commitment to student government is not here at this, at uh, preliminary events like this debate or the speed campaigning? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, so I've made it my, uh, a big effort of mine to come out to all these events. I was at speed campaigning and I'm here now. But I don't think it's fair to you know, slander Frida in this way. I think that she works so many hours to be able to provide for herself. I know a lot of students here at UTD do the same. And I think that it is a very good thing that she's out there providing for herself. And I feel like I can communicate her message here effectively. All right. How is your plat the message of your platform meaningfully different from the UTD app or UTD subreddit? This is in regards to the app that you and your running mate want to develop. Can you please repeat the question? It's a bit ambiguous to understand. How is the app that you and your running mate want to develop meaningfully different from the UTD app or the UTD subreddit? So it's not, uh, we, are, we have already an app that is developed and we are saying that we are adding features to the UTD app. So that was what I was saying, that we're going to add some new features to the app that increases socialization on campus, yeah. if that answers the question. All right. And we have the last specific audience question for Devin. You mentioned your ties to OSTEM and XAI. With the passage of SB 17, how will you ensure the safety and equity of queer and other marginalized students? You have 30 seconds. Yeah, I think making sure that students know about the resources that are available. Um, there are still a lot of resources available that are under different departments that can be really helpful. Um, additionally, making sure students have those safe spaces to come to, that they have events that they can come to to feel like they're with people in their same community. Um, and I think that really goes for all students at UT Dallas, making sure that there's a community that they know is here for them. All right, that is all for the audience question portion. 
Now we'll have closing statements from each of the candidates. We'll go ahead and start with Devin. You'll have 90 seconds to present your closing statement. Yeah, first off, I'd just like to thank the other candidates today. You all spoke incredibly. Um, I really s respect both of your experience and innovation. Um, I also want to thank everyone for coming out here today. Uh, I know a lot of you are involved in student government or involved in other on-campus organizations. Uh, and I just want to say, don't let that end here. I think that that's incredible. And I hope that you all leave here today and continue to improve this university and make this university what it is. As president, I want to do anything that I can to make sure that I'm supporting that within student government and that student government broadly is supporting that that we're making sure that there's a community, that we're advocating for the students. Uh, more than anything, I want to be sure that student voices are being heard, and I believe that I have the experience to be an effective conduit for those voices, uh, willing to consider innovation while also having a healthy respect for tradition and the things that we've done in the past that have been successful and have worked. Uh, so I guess in conclusion, now is the hour of voting power. Chonk, you'll have 90 seconds for your closing statement as well. Yeah, so before we leave here today, I want to thank all of y'all for sticking around. I know it's been hard, especially for us candidates up here. I've been sweating, man. Um, but although my running mate was not able to make it today, Frida, I bet she would be thanking y'all as well. I hope that tonight has shown you that we cannot keep up this continuous, this continuous talk about experience and the minutia of government bureaucracy here in student government. I hope that it's shown you that we need bold, new, transformational ideas for student government if we want to see actual change. We don't, really don't need any more of the same old, same old talk, and I'm going to be honest, tangible ideas are needed. We've talked about a lot of things, a lot of things that Nirav said ChatGPT could think up. And what we really need is a commitment to focus, a commitment to accountability, a commitment to transparency, and a commitment to really saying that these campaign promises don't just end here. These campaign promises start here. And when we leave this room today, and when we get elected next week, I will say that I will commit to fulfilling every single one of the campaign promises that both Frida and I have made. I promise you that now, and I hope that in a year from now, you will see that we were telling the truth. All right, Nirav, you'll have 90 seconds for your closing statement now. Okay, so I am astounded by the speech. Shashanka, it was really good speech. Your speech was wonderful. And to be honest, I have not prepared a closing statement. I just want to express my gratitude to be here on stage with my seniors, at least, and for the audience to like just hear us talk, random stuff. And some of you must be like bored or like, oh, they're repeating the same stuff again and again. I, I, I'm really sorry if you're bored, but I feel like um, there, there's a lot of positive change that is going to happen, either if it's me or it's them. I, I completely agree with all their ideas and innovations that they're going to bring to campus. But I, I left out a point that um, I would like to address on is there is a lot of things happening in current student government that I really appreciate. It is like the Green Initiative by Alyssa Model, and I love that project too. And there are a lot of things that are, uh, was not mentioned in this uh, the specific speech. So I really encourage you guys to check out the SG website. And I'm really grateful to the UTD Mercury and TV to take out their time and arrange all this stuff and get up with a new podium in like less than 10 minutes. That was really creative, Sir Shivani. Yeah, and thank you so much for being here. <laughs> All right, that concludes the SG executive debate. Once again, voting is going to be open next week, April 1st to 3rd. All students will get an email where they can cast their ballots for any of the executive candidates. And the video of tonight's debate will be available online at UTD TV on YouTube later this week. Have a good night, everyone.